Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching the solutions to the, any of the original problems, uh, if you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the middle of redoing the problems and we are on page number 169. Please turn to it, page number 169, the very first problem in the first column. Page 169. This is what the problem says. It says that we are, it says that a, b, and k are positive, are positive integers. We are told that they are positive integers. We are further told that if we see this symbol, if we see this symbol, a raised to k with the with the parallel line there, with a b, that symbol means that a raised to k is a divisor of b. We are further told that but but we are told that a raised to k plus 1 is not a divisor of B. Question simply is how much is K? Oh, very first thing of course we need to do is make sure that we understand the question. It's very important. Obviously otherwise we're not going to get anywhere. The very first thing, the very important, the most important uh, thing, the most important concept that we have to get out of the way is what does this mean? Divisor. Divisor is a very fancy, very annoying, very geeky way of saying factor. They're telling us that A raised to K is a factor. If you see this symbol, two parallel lines with a raised to k on the, and b on the other side, that this symbol in this problem means that a raised to k has to be a factor of b, the number that we see on the, on the, on the right hand side, but that's not enough. But the second condition is that it has to be of such a nature that a raised to k plus 1 should not be a factor of b. For example, let me give you a simple example. For example, here's a, here's a simple example. For example, uh, for example, we can see that this works. This works. Why? Because 3 raised to 1 is 3. And we know that this, this means, this symbol, this symbol means, this symbol means that 3 is a factor of 21. 3 is a divisor of 21. Of course we see that 3, three is, a, is a factor of 21. 21 is 3 times 12, 7. But but we can clearly see that 3 raised to 1 plus 1, 3 raised to 1 plus 1, you see k plus 1 here, 3 raised to 1 plus 1, 3 raised to 1 plus 1, which is, which is 3 squared, which is 9, and 9 is not a factor of 21. So that works. That scenario does work. This one would work. Here's another example. Here's another example. 5 raised to 2 and then parallel line and 700. Now what does that tell us? That tells us that tells us that 5 raised to 2 which is 25, 25 is a is a factor of 700 which it is. 25 is a factor of 700 but but 5 raised to 3 which is going to be 125 is not is not a factor of 700. You can't divide 700 by 125 evenly. Now let's, let's, now let's do the problem. Now that we understand the question, let's do the problem. See what they have to say, okay? Let's do it on the top. What we are told here, what we are told here is that 2 raised to k, 2 raised to k, and then they give you the symbol. 72. That means, that implies that 2 raised to k is a factor of 72, but 2 raised to k plus 1 is not. And our job is to find that particular value of k that makes this thing work. Let's find out, shall we? Of course, very first thing we need to do here is to find out all the factors of 72 that will come in very handy. I need the room. I need the room really badly. So I need to squeeze something here. Let's do 72 here. Let's do 72 here. 
you divide it by 2, we get 7 has 3 2's. Seven, 7 has 3 2's, the remaining one goes and joins the 2 becomes 12 and 12 has 6 2's. That's, that's again an even number, we can divide it one more time and that's going to give us 3 has 1 2 and the remaining one goes and becomes 16 and 16 has 8 2's. We can go one more time. We can go one more time and that gives us 2 raised 2 times 9. That tells us that 72, 72 can be written as 2 raised to 3 times 9. What do you know? What do you know? Just continue here. We are almost done. We are almost done. What does this tell us? This tells us, this implies, this work that we have done here, this work here implies that 2 raised to 3 is a factor, is a factor of 72. But, but 2 raised to 3 plus 1, which is 2 raised to 4, is not, is not a factor of 72. We cannot divide 72 evenly by 16. That's it, we are done. So what was the value of k? The value of the k was 3. This implies, this whole thing tells us, this whole, hence, hence, k equals 3. Answer is k equals 3. k equals 3. Notice on the side, I'm going to make it on the, on the, on the, on the, as a side note, notice, notice that 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 2 is also a factor, factor of 72. 2 raised to 2 is also a factor of 72, 4, we can divide, obviously 2 times 2, 4, we can divide 72 by 4, and, and 2 raised to 3 is also, is also a factor of 72. 2 raised to 3 is also a factor of 72. But the condition is that 2 plus 2 raised to k plus 1 cannot be a factor of 72, which is why here, which is why here, Therefore, with this, this word that you see here, right here, therefore, therefore, the answer is not k raised to 2. That would not work. If you claim that k equals 2, then what you're claiming, if you say that k equals 2, then what you're claiming is that 2 raised to 4 is a factor of 72, but 2 raised to 3 is not a factor of 72, which is not true. 2 raised to 3 is a factor of 72. 2 raised to 4 is not a factor of 72, which is why k is 3. The answer is B, not A. The answer is B. Let's move on to the next problem. Number one, whatever the next problem is. Number 111. Number 111. Number 111 tells us that t is equal to 1 over 2 raised to 9 times 5 raised to 3. And the question is, how many zeros, how many zeros will t have between the decimal and the first non-zero digit to the right of the decimal point. Now listen, I, I fully realize, I'm fully cognizant of the fact that you have the book in front of you, but I prefer to put the entire problem on the blackboard because it, it makes me comfortable, it makes more sense. You know, instead of just my reading the problem to you, it makes more sense, even though it takes time. So here's the question. Here's the question. The question is, how many zeros will T, this, this is T, will T have between the decimal point and the first non-zero digit to the right of the decimal point. For example, for example, if there is a number here which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 5, 3, 2, 1, then this one has how many zeros, how many zeros between, between the decimal point, right here is the decimal point, and the first, and the first non-zero digit to the right of the decimal point. First non-zero digit is 5. And between the first, between the first non-zero digit to the right, to the right of the decimal point, we have how many zeros? We have one, two, three, four. This one has four zeros between the decimal 
and the first non-zero digit to the right of the decimal point. We have to find out how many zeros are there in this quantity between the decimal point and the first non-zero digit to the right of the decimal point. Are you up for it? Let's go then. Let's do it. I'm not going to explain every single baby step because otherwise it will be forever. So some of the stuff I take it for granted that you understand the basic elementary uh, manipulation of exponents. Do you understand? You have to know that. So this can be written as, so here we go, this can be written, this quantity can be written as t, t can, be, can be written as 1 over 2 raised to 6 times 2 raised to 3 times 5 raised to 3. This part I take it for granted that you understand that you are able to make the transition from there to there. All, all we have done here, all we have done here is that we have taken the 2 raised to 9 and we have to broken up into 2 raised to 6 times 2 raised to 3. Now, here we have 2 raised to 3 and here we have 5 raised to 3. 2 raised to 3 times 5 raised to 3 can be written as 10 raised to 3. So t is equal to 1 over 2 raised to 6 times 10 raised to 3. And then in that in return can be written as 1 over 2 raised to 6 times 1 over 3. So far so good. Now I need so now I need the room so we have to erase all of these things so we can do the work here. Okay. Now what we need to look at is this quantity right here, 1 over 2 raised to 6. 1 over 2, which is 1 raised to 2 raised, 1 over 2 raised to 1 is 0.5. 1 over 2 squared is 0.25. 1 over 2 to the third, so far so good. If it's 25, the next one is going to be half of 25, which is 12 and a half. It's going to be point, point 0.125, 12 and a half, point 0.125. 1 raised to 4, 1 raised to 4, okay, pay attention to this. Pay very close attention, otherwise you're going to get lost. You're going to get lost very quickly, okay? We're not going to do all the work. You have to understand and pay attention as to what's going on here. This is 12. This is 12. If you take a half of 12, it becomes 6. So it's going to be 0 0.06 something something something. 0 0.06 something something something. Are you still with me? Next one is 2 raised to 5. Two, 1 over 2 raised to 5. Which is going to be half of that amount. Which is simply going to be 0 0.03 something something something. Still with me? Very good job. The next one is going to be 2 raised to 6 which is going to be 0 0.0 and now it's going to be half of that amount. This is 3. So it's going to be 1 and a half which is going to show up as, think of this as 30. So it's going to be 15. In that place, instead of a place of 30, it's going to be 15. It's going to be 0, 1, 5, something, 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 something. What that is does not interest us. We are not, not interested at all what that exact amount is because we just want to find out how many zeros there are between the decimal point and the first non-zero digits. This, this guy right here, 1 over 2 raised to 6, has only one zero between the decimal and the first non-zero digit. But we still have to take care of this guy. We still have to take care of 1 over 10 raised to 3. Uh, so let's do that here. 1 raised to 10 over 3, 1 raised to, uh, 1 raised to, 1 raised to, 1 over 10 is 0.1. 1 raised to 2 is, 0 0.01, 1 out of 100. Ten, one, 1 over 10 raised to 3 is 1 divided by 1000, which is 0 0.001. So all we have to do now is to multiply these two quantities. We have to take this quantity and multiply this quantity. Okay, keep listening. So it is simply 15 times 1. It is just 15 times 1, which is 15. So we have 15 here. 15 times 1 is 15. We are almost done. All we have to do now is count how many decimal places are. This one has 1, 2, 3. And this one has 1, 2, 3. There are 6 decimal places. Uh, there, there are 6 digits after the decimal. So decimal point is right here, 15. We have to move it 6 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Decimal ends up here. And how many zeros are we going to have? Let's find out. As a matter of fact, I feel so enthusiastic and so worked up that I'm going to actually change the plot. I'm going to actually change the color just to have the flare, flare for the dramatics. Do you understand? Here we go. One, two, three, and four. It has four zero between the decimal and the first non-zero digits 
to the right of the decimal. That's it. There are four of them. One, two, three, and four. Voila. The answer is four. The answer is four, whatever that letter happens to be. That's the answer choice B. Let's move on, shall we? Next one. I need the break as always. Always taking a break, I know that. Number 112. Number 112 tells us that 68% of the population, 68% of the population lies within the one standard deviation. Within the one standard deviation. This has to do with what is known as normal distribution and I'm going to actually draw the normal distribution for us here we need the room obviously so we have to raise something here is our normal distribution it looks something like this and here is the mean and 68 percent of the population is going to lie within the one standard deviation 68 percent we are told 68 percent of the population lies within this one standard deviation. So this is the mean right here, this is the mean, and this is mean plus one standard deviation, this is mean minus first standard deviation. If it's 68%, half of 68, half of 60 is 30, and half of 8 is 4, so it's 34% here, and 34% here. Now listen, a thought just occurs to me, if you are not familiar with this concept at all, because I do, we do not have a luxury of going into it right now, but if you are not familiar with this concept, and if you need to have a better understanding of it, sound understanding of this concept, then I'll suggest that you go and watch this video. I'm going to write it down someplace. Just, just put down my name, Kishwani. Put, put down my name, Kishwani, and then normal distribution. Normal distribution. Anytime Anytime if you're confused about certain concept, type in my name Keshwani, type in the, the concept that you that you want to learn about uh, and search for it at the YouTube, something might pop up. One never knows. One never knows. It's, it's worth a try. Do you understand? There are close to 2,000 videos there and I have covered many topics. For example, if you want to learn about rational, uh, rational numbers, well, there's a video for rational numbers. If you want to learn about uh, divisibility rule, there's a, there's a video for divisibility rule. Do you understand? Uh, if you want to learn about... Uh, uh, Prime numbers, there's a video on prime numbers. So just type in Keshwani and prime numbers and you will see a video. Just type in Keshwani and put in uh, ra rational numbers or irrational numbers and you, there's a video on that. Similarly, just type in Keshwani and normal distribution and watch that video and you will understand what I'm doing here. Anyway, let's do the problem. The question is asking us what, per what percentage of the distribution, what percentage, what percentage, lies, what percentage of the distribution lies below one standard deviation. Well that's very straightforward. Look, there is a 50% to the, to the right of the mean and there is a 50% to the left of the mean. I know I'm pointing the right, wrong way. This is 34%. This is 34% and if, they, if, the, if there is a 50% to the right of it, 50 minus 34 is 16. This is right here, 16. And they're asking us what percentage lies below the first standard deviation. What percentage lies below the first standard deviation? Below the first standard deviation we see all of this thing which is 50%, all of that is 50% and we see this part which is 34. So what percentage lies below one standard deviation? The answer is 50% below the mean, 50% below the mean and other 34% between the mean and the first standard deviation. There you go. The answer is 84%. 84% of the population lies below that point. In other words, in other words, let me give you a simple example. In other words, if you took an exam, an exam was given, and if I, and you were told that the mean score in the class was the mean score in the class was uh, 65, and they told you that the standard deviation was 7. 7 plus 65 is 72. So this this quantity would be 72. Now, if you happen to score 
exactly 72 on that test where you are told that the mean was 65 and the standard deviation was 7 and your score happens to be exactly 72, 72 points what that tells us is that 84% of the people who took the exam 84% of the people who took the exam scored below you did in other, word, in other words a score of 72 translates into the top 16 percentile do you understand? that's what it is let's do the next one number Number 113, the very last page, last problem on the page. Very last one on the page. Make sure you watch this video, Keshwani and then normal distribution. In number 13 we are told, in number 13 we are told that the ra ratio of Republican to Democrat is 3 to 5. Ratio of Republican to Democrat is 3 to 5. We, have, we are then told, then we are told that if the number of Republican, if the number of Republican goes up by 600 and, and the number of Democrat goes up by 500, if these two conditions are met where number of Republican goes up by 600 exactly and number of Democrat goes up by exactly 500, if that were to happen, we are told in that case that the new ratio, new ratio of Republican to Democrat, Republican to Democrat, Republican to Democrat is four to five. And the question simply is how many more? The question is actually very tricky. The way the question is tricked, uh, our phrase here is very tricky. I'm going to squeeze it in here. How many more? How many more Democrat? compared to Republican, this is the part, after, after the increase, after the increase, this is, this is the They're not looking for how many Democrats are there or how many Republicans were there to start out with. They're not asking us the initial quantity of Democrats or Republican. They're looking, for, and they're not asking us for the quantity that exists after the, uh, after, they're not looking for the quantities before they're not looking for the quantities after. Listen very carefully. They're not asking how many people, how many Republicans were there to start out with or how many Republicans were there at the end. They're asking us how many more, how many more Democrats were there compared to Republican after the increase. In other words, we have to find out the change in the two numbers. We have to first find out how many Republicans were there to start out with. Then we have to find out how many Democrats were there. Well, you'll see the process. Let's do it one by one. Okay. I, sh I changed my mind. I, I don't want to. I don't want to squeeze this in here. It's very crowded. Let's erase this part then. The new ratio. In this case, the new ratio. The new ratio. New ratio is going to be what? New ratio. How do we? How do we express new ratio? Republican has gone up by six hundred, so it's R plus six hundred, and Democrats have gone up by five hundred, so it's D plus five hundred, and that new ratio we are told. The new ratio we are told is four to five. Four to five. This is our this is our one equation. This is our equation number two. Equation number two. And here is our equation number one. This is our equation number one. We have two simple linear equations. We just have to solve for the two variables. That's all it is. So let's do it. Let's continue here. So this equation, when we cross multiply, we find when we cross multiply, we find that five times r plus six hundred equals four times d plus five hundred. We can open the parenthesis. We can open the parenthesis. We get 5r times 5 times 600 is 3000. We get 4d and then 2000. Let's subtract 1000 from both sides. Now, from here, Let's look at this one here. This equation right here, the first one, it tells us that the initial ratio was initial ratio of initial ratio of Republican to Democrat, Republican to Democrat to start out with was three to five. Was three to five. This is our first equation. If we cross multiply, we find that five times r equals three times d. Five times r equals three times d. Five times r is right here. We're gonna put it in there. So we get 3d plus 3000 equals 4d plus 2000. 
bring the d to the other side, 3 subtract 3d, so we're going to get d equals, and bring 2000 here, and we get 1000. This is, this, is the, this is the initial number of Democrat. That in turn implies, that in turn implies that the Repu Republican must have been, Republicans are 3 times 5 times the number of Democrat, 3 over 5 times the number of Democrat, which we know is 1000. So that's 5 times 200, which is 600. Okay. We are not, we're not quite done yet. We are far from done, uh, far, far from being done. Now we need to continue here, somewhere, somewhere. So this is what we started out with. We have 1,000 Democrat, 600 Republican. So let's do up here. I have left this part on purpose. Republican, we are told, goes up by 600. We found out the Republicans were 600 to start out with. This is the initial number, which means the new, new, new Republican is going to be 600 that we started out with right here, and then they go up by 600. So there's 1,200. There's 1,200. New number of Democrat. Well, we started out with how many? We started out with 1,000 here. This is D, which is 1,000, plus it goes up by 500. So that's 1500. And the question was, now we're going to read the question one more time slowly. The question was, how many more Democrat, how many more Democrat, how many more Democrat compared to Republica, uh, uh, Republican after the increase? And these figures are after the increase. See, these are the new numbers. So how many more Democrats are there compared to Republican after the increase? The answer is 300. There are, there are 300 more Democrat after the increase. That's all. We are done. We are done with that problem. We are done with that page. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.